Hi everyone. This is Lokesh Varan. Hope you all are doing good. Today's topic is capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio also called as capital to risk assets ratio. Okay. If you want to understand the financial performance of a particular bank, this ratio will be very useful. This is one of the key performance measures. So for banks, you, if you want to understand the financial performance, you can also use this ratio to understand its performance. So let's discuss about capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio protects depositors fund and also you know protects the old financial system. Now, capital adequacy ratio, the formula is equal to banks tier one capital plus banks tier two capital divided by risk weighted assets. Tier 1 capital is primary funding source of bank. Tier 1 capital consists of shareholders equity plus retained earnings. Whereas Tier 2 capital consists of revaluation reserves, hybrid capital instruments and subordinate term debt and general loan loss reserves. So this is Tier 1 capital and Tier 2 capital. Tier 1 capital also called as ordinary capital of bank. It can absorb bank's losses without affecting its trading. Next, tier two capital. Once tier one capital gets exhausted, tier two, tier two capital will be used. So now, so if a customer wants to understand a bank's financial performance, they have to see tier one capital and tier two capital both. So now capital adequacy ratio suggests that tier one capital plus tier two capital and total divided by risk weighted assets now what is risk weighted assets risk weighted assets are the total assets of bank you know categorized based on the risk attributable to each category of assets okay let's take an example for example assume bank xyz has tier one capital of 30 lakhs and 20 lakhs of tier two capital it also has four loans and their assigned riskness is as follows. First, loan number one, 20 lakhs loan given to government. So now the risk weightage for this particular category of asset is zero percentage. Whereas, go and then 20 lakhs loan given to Mr. X at 10 percentage. Now, this risk category is 10 percentage. That means the risk involved in terms of this transaction is 10 percentage that means it's a 10 percentage probability that this loan amount that we have given to mr x will not return and then the third one is 40 lakhs loan to company y okay the risk weighted weightage for this particular category is 50 percentage and the last one is 500 lakhs loan to is at 100 percentage 100 percentage okay so nothing but the risk weightage for the last category is 100 percentage. Now, step number one, add tier one plus tier two capital. That is 30 lakhs plus 20 lakhs. The total capital is 50 lakhs. Now we are done with the numerator. Now let's go to the denominator. So the denominator is risk weightage attributable to, attributable to each category of assets. Now the first category, 20 lakhs. It, it's zero percentage risk. There is no risk involved in this transaction. That means it is zero. Now, the second category is 20 lakhs. Similarly, 10 percentage is the risk weightage. The third category is 40 lakhs, which is 50 percentage is the risk weightage. And the last category is 500 lakhs, where the risk weightage is 100 percentage. If you accumulate everything, you will get 522 lakhs, which is nothing but the risk weightage assets of bank is 522 lakhs. Now, capital adequacy ratio equal to tier one capital plus tier two capital, which is 50 lakhs divided by 522 lakhs. That is the risk weighted assets. Now, the percentage is 9.58 percentage. Now, if you see this percentage, which is above eight percentage threshold as suggested by Basel II category of banks, for banks. So now this bank is a bit safe. So this is about capital adequacy ratio. Now. Let's understand what are the demerits of capital adequacy ratio. Capital adequacy ratio measures all the factors, oh no, 
that related to risk of a particular bank and you know calculate this risk but that does not take into consider any of the future probability risk or any uncertainty calam uncertainties in the banking operations okay so now that will be that is the disadvantage you no know, that is something in a kind of, kind of you know uh, a feature missing in capital adequacy ratio apart from that there are a lot of good features also available in capital adequacy ratio that's about capital adequacy ratio let's understand capital adequacy ratio of few indian banks private and public sector banks okay and understand its financial performance okay let's start with yes bank so the capital adequacy ratio of yes bank is 16.50 percentage as of march 2019 whereas the capital adequacy ratio of hdfc bank is 17.11 percentage okay and the next one is yes yes sba bank so in terms of sba bank the capital adequacy ratio is 12.72 percentage so now the next step, next graph is you know uh, it's a kind of you know uh, as of 2018 so capital adequacy ratio of banks in various countries are compared in this table if you see there are different countries you can see in india there are banks are classified into two categories one is all the banks and the next sector is public sector banks if you see uh, average public sector banks ratio is only 11.7 percentage whereas the overall banks capital adequacy ratio is 14.6 which means that the capital adequacy ratio of public sector banks are very less compared to the private sector banks and also this public sector bank capital adequacy ratio you know reduces the overall average of the indian banks okay that's a quick comparison that's about capital adequacy ratio and then now you can also see the graph from rbi i've just taken this report from rbi this is capital to risk weighted assets ratio you can see between uh, from uh, march 2017 till september 2019 how the capital to risk weighted asset ratio differs between the public sector banks and the private banks and also the financial institutions and all sector banks so okay that's short nutshell about capital adequacy ratio hope you like this video thanks for watching